Joining me now to discuss Jennifer Caffarella. She's Chief of Staff and National Security Fellow at the Institute for the Study of War. Jennifer, good to have you. Thank you. So this has been a concern, uh, and Haynes is not alone in expressing this. We heard similar from the CIA director on the weekend and, and others we've spoken to on this broadcast, that, that as Putin loses or doesn't advance, it's a cornered kind of scenario. He cannot lose and therefore pushes back harder. And I, I wonder if you uh, share that view. Look, I think it's important to note that he can lose this war. In fact, he's on track, in my view, to lose this war. Whether he will accept that loss is a different story. And I think so far we still see him imagining that he can conquer Ukraine and eliminate Ukraine as a nation and as a people. That's not a reality. But I think it does, in some respects, pose an opportunity for Ukraine because it means he's miscalculating. Mm -hmm. He's been miscalculating since the start of the war by thinking he can break Ukrainian will to resist. Yeah. And I think expecting he can do more than sustain his current gains is yeah. another miscalculation. Break Ukrainian will, break NATO unity, break EU unity, all those prove to be miscalculations. T tell me your view of the, the view on, on the Eastern Front right now, because uh, officials I speak to say Russia is attempting to punch through and, and specifically to break supply lines there and also to attempt to surround Ukrainian forces in that area. When they do, in general, Ukrainian forces strike back, have, been, have had some success pushing them back. I, what is your sense of, is that a static border? Is, is it sort of verging towards a frozen conflict, a term that you hear? So we are in basically an attrition stage of mm -hmm. the fight in eastern Ukraine. I think that's important to, it's an important term because it does not mean stalemate in a way that ends the fighting, right? The Russians are continuing to try to push forward. Mm -hmm. They're not having much success in part because they have not recovered from their initial failures in this war to actually marshal a coherent operational you know, plan. Whereas the Ukrainians are actually beginning to gain some momentum in a counteroffensive and are able to stitch together some of these you know, tactical attacks into what could be a wider campaign. Does a Putin who is cornered and not making the gains he wanted at the speed he wanted and in effect losing in your view, is he more likely to take a catastrophic step like the use for instance of a battlefield nuclear weapon? It's an important question, and I think this is where the NATO unity and deterrence really comes into play. I think the fact that we haven't seen Putin try yet to escalate against NATO countries or to punish directly NATO member states for supporting Ukraine demonstrates that that deterrence is having an effect. We need to strengthen it and make sure that we sustain that over the long term. I spoke to a European diplomat last night who, who said that at the end of the day, we don't really know the status of the fight on the Eastern Front. Uh, that, that to some degree, we, we have better insight into Russian losses than Ukrainian advances. And we see, we played it earlier, you know, Ukrainians will release a lot of successful attacks on Russian tanks and, and ships, etc. And they've had enormous success. We've seen that. But is it possible we don't know the true state of the battle there? We have a partial picture. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think part of that is because of the operational security that the Ukrainians are maintaining mm -hmm. and the decisions that we at the Institute for the Study of War and others have made, you know, not to publish on what the Ukrainian mm. attempt at advances, what their operational plans are, you know, in, insofar yeah. as they can be discerned. And that's important. Um, but what we can tell is an aggregate picture, right? We can see the fighting day in and day out and you can layer that and get a sense that the Russian military, again, still is not bringing any operational coherence to this fight. Can Ukrainians not just hold the line there, but push Russian forces further back? Because you, you hear this discussion as well, recapturing parts of Donbass, even some say Crimea. And I know that's, a, that's a more optimistic view, but is that a realistic view? I think it depends in part on whether and to what extent the U.S. and NATO continue to support Ukraine. But the next weeks, I think, are going to be in some ways decisive. The Ukrainians have begun to sustain some momentum in a counteroffensive, and they have some decisions to make now that they've pushed the Russians out of the perimeter of Kharkiv, the second largest city mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Where might they open a new front? That's a political decision as much as it is a military one, right? Because the, the Russians are now attempting to layer in their own form of governance, mm. and the Ukrainians need to contest that. Yeah, no question. Raising the Russian flag, sometimes even the Soviet flag in some of these cities. Jennifer Caffarella, thanks so much for joining Thank you. us.